Hey, hello everybody. Welcome back for another cryptocurrency video. Hope that you're all doing well and that you're all having an absolutely fantastic day. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Apparently, young crypto investors in South Korea prefer XRP over Bitcoin and Ethereum, the two largest cryptocurrencies currently by market cap. Once again, for those of you who were not here in the long, long ago of 2017, I've said this multiple times this year. It's funny how, once again, history is just constantly repeating itself. Some people say that it's rhyming, whatever word makes you feel better. In that equation. Uh, back in good old 2017, when the world was still not as crazy as it currently is right now, uh, South Korea and Japan ruled the cryptocurrency market. Like, not like lightly. It was Japan, South Korea, and more or less China as well, at least back then. Uh, they were one of the main catalysts for the major movements within the cryptocurrency space. And the news basically was back then, whatever coin they were into uh, got the biggest movements, got the hugest price pumps. That's, you know, the coins that kind of made it to the top during that bull run. Subsequently, in 2018, early 2019, Japan and South Korea and then also China uh, began to roll out massive amounts of cryptocurrency regulations. Uh, they banned or threatened to ban them. Around 2018, 2019, the only ones who did not were Japan and South Korea. And since then, Japan and South Korea are two of the... I mean, multiple countries have cryptocurrency regulations, but Japan and South Korea are like there. Them and Hong Kong as well. And basically, the news once again is they controlled the market before. They're probably going to control the market again as they have clear and explicit regulations as to what they can and cannot do within the cryptocurrency market. And it appears that younger people within the country are choosing XRP over Bitcoin. There's also extra information, which I also find to be a little weird, <coughs> but we will get there. BitHum data has revealed that 82% of investors in their 20s, often referred to as Gen Z or Gen Z, preferred other altcoins, but not Ethereum. According to a local news outlet known as News One, which analyzed BitHum's data investment in H1 2023, it was discovered that Gen Z investors often opt for altcoins with higher volatility than Bitcoin. Meanwhile, it says older investors, okay, tend to be more conservative. Sure. It was observed that South Korea's Gen Z invested more in XRP than they did Bitcoin and Ethereum with the former's investment being only 3.2% higher than the latter. Uh, at the same time, they're also... So I've now... Hear me, he, he, hear me out here. It's recently come to my attention that apparently... So remember how we had that chart a year ago that showed... It was a map of uh, Europe and a map of the United States. And it was showing like what coins were most popular everywhere. It was like... Dogecoin was super popular. Shiba Inu was very popular. Uh, Ethereum was very popular. There were very few states and countries within Europe that actually like preferred Bitcoin per se. A lot of them were like really interesting altcoins. We had like a sprinkle of Cardano every now and again. Some places also had XRP as well, even in some states within the, within the United States. Um, it's recently come to my attention that apparently different countries are even like... There's a there's an even further divide in coins because apparently a lot of countries out there are into really obscure coins that I didn't even know was a thing. There's a couple on the screen here, but I won't mention what the other ones are because I personally don't think these coins are going to go anywhere. Um, however, it says that apparently also in South Korea, a, a set of coins, one called Fellas. If you if you know English, yep, that that same kind of fellas, and one called Mines of Delarnia, apparently were also quite popular in South Korea as well. And I would dare say out loud, please don't invest in those coins because they probably are garbage. 
I saw a list somewhere that showed altcoins that are famous in parts of Africa and parts of Asia, parts of Europe, parts of Latin America. I mean, hot garbage, like literal hot garbage were were the vast, if not all of these coins, except for like the top coins. But yeah, I didn't know that like separate places were just like not paying attention to the most popular coins and they were like digging in like coin number 830, coin number 1,400 for some reason. Maybe it's something cultural about those areas. I'm not really exactly sure. It says XRP is also preferred by investors in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. However, the coin is mostly accumulated by Gen Zs. And it goes on to say that those in their 40s prefer Ether and Bitcoin because these coins could be more risk-averse. I have never heard crypto and risk-averse in the same paragraph, nonetheless the same book. So I thought that was actually quite... um. Uh, Quite interesting to hear something like that. Like there's 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 no part of my mind when you're talking about the investment world, not one part of it, where I'm like, oh yeah, like Bitcoin and Ethereum are like they're so unrisky compared to like like there it's 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 the cryptocurrency space, and we all we've all experienced those uh 95 percent drops in price. Here's the actual article right here. I I can't, <laughs> I can't read it, but. I'm sure someone else out there can. So here, here's just for reference, everything that we were just talking about. Yeah, very fascinating. I still think that the next uh, bull run is going to be uh, quite interesting, not only for rapid movements up in price, Bitcoin finally passing by 100K, Ethereum, blah, 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 blah. But I, I think a lot of people are being misdirected when it comes to the news as to what's going to be big and how big these things are going to be. But once again, you know, time moves forward. We don't have a we don't have much of a choice, so we will definitely see which coins end up being the biggest gainers by the end of 2025. That's the apparently XRP is super popular in South Korea news. I'm I'm sure it's nothing. I'm sure that couldn't mean anything for one of the countries that was controlling the cryptocurrency market. I'm sure it's nothing. And yeah, Let's move on. Okay, this was probably, and I mean it, this was probably one of my favorite news stories that we've gotten in a while. Like this is, I mean, actually one of my favorite news stories. Several lawmakers within the United States have expressed concerns about the privacy risks of the Federal Reserve issuing a central bank digital currency. They said, and I quote, Americans have a right to financial privacy, one congressman said, emphasizing we do not need a CBDC, a central bank digital currency, that can track your purchases like China does with their digital yuan. Another one noted CBDC is to sound money, what probably can't say that word, is to freedom. Let me explain something to, to, to everyone out there. If, if you know this, well, this is just going to be a gigantic refresher. I'm constantly shocked. I wouldn't say appalled, but I'm constantly shocked at how much. It's not that how much people don't know, but it's more like what people don't know. How people kind of skip through their day completely unaware of nearly everything that's happening around them. That's not said in a mean way, and I'll explain exactly what I mean. Because I do understand that in the world that we live in, there's 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 far far too much happening. You have bills, you have rent, you have your own life to take care of. You have you're trying to go on a vacation, you're trying to do something nice for yourself. You have things that need to be paid. You need to eat three times every single day. There's a lot to think about. However. This entire discussion of central bank digital currencies, I think, is very particular because a lot of people, um, and this main discussion appears to be coming from the US of A. I'm not sure why it's so prevalent on my Twitter, on my timelines everywhere. The, the, the general discussion is that we do not, collectively, but also in the US, uh, do not need a central bank digital currency. Check. 
Cool. Totally agree with it. Because I've mentioned before thousands of times, when I said it, it wasn't as a joke. It was more of a, no, this is what it is. A central bank digital currency is going to be only just a digitized version of the dollar. Like the, the physical paper that you hold in your hand. Why? Countries are trying to get rid of paper currency. You would assume that the first answer is because... Uh, I don't even know what the first answer could possibly be. A lot of Nordic countries have recently adopted a near 99.9% .9 digital format where everything is digital, everything is paid for with the tap of your phone, tap of your watch, tap of your eyelid, whatever people are using to pay for things right now. And they found that there is what they would call far less tax evasion because they figured out that if you own a store, a company, an institution, a, a, a food shop, what's a food shop? Restaurant. If people can pay in cash, there's more of a risk for people to evade their taxes. If everything is digital and there's a record of everything, well, you can't do it. We can see exactly what was paid, what wasn't paid, how much money you made, and how much you should pay in taxes. And because of this, of what the Nordic countries have been able to do, other countries are now trying to follow suit. This is what we saw many years ago in India, for those of you who weren't here for that news. The idea from India was that they were trying to get rid of their larger notes, their larger bills that they had, because the government claimed that people were using this money too easily to be able to trade, to barter, to buy, to sell, and therefore, they couldn't as easily track where money was going because people were moving such large bills around. This was a general idea. This is why you keep hearing about China and India uh, trying to really push out their central bank digital currency and or already having one and making sure that it's used everywhere. The general idea comes down to tax evasion. We can't really track taxes if people are still using paper money. A lot of what I'm hearing um, from the wider community regarding central bank digital currencies, especially once again within the United States of America, is the idea that this would cause some type of, of risk to your, uh, what do you call it, privacy, to what you're doing, to what, you know, you, you can't do anything privately online because you're now being tracked by a central bank digital currency. I am here to inform you right here, right now, for those of you who do not know. Now, he, he, hear my words in plain American English. Everything you do, everything you look at, everywhere you go, everything you buy is already tracked. Surprise! The constant discussion is when we get central bank digital currencies, that's going to... That's going to be the kicker because, you know, they, they'll be able to see everything that we're buying then. You know, they'll see it in our bank records. They'll see it on the central bank digital currency database website. You know that everything, every, listen, everything you click on, click on online is tracked. This is how you get ads because they look at what you've previously looked at before or what the algorithm deems you might be interested in and they give you an ad based on this. Everything you click on online. Sometimes there are certain websites like when they ask you for cookies, I always say no. Certain websites are able to even track the movement of your mouse to see what you might be interested in. Look it up. Every website you go to is saved. In a database, everything you look at on your phone, when you're on Instagram and you hover over something, for, yes, when you hover over something for too long on Instagram, the algorithm is also taking note of this as well. You hovered over that photo or that video for 38 and a half seconds, everything else you hovered over for two seconds. We're going to start showing him more of that. All that information is also kept by the company and can also be easily shared with any government who decides that they want that information. The idea that you're going to be tracked more than you already are is absolute nonsense. The problem with central bank digital currencies comes down to the actual 
idea that you being able to go to an ATM, take out money and buy what you wish will simply disappear. The other idea comes down to actual stringent monetary controls wherein we heard before years and years ago from multiple different countries, but once again, we'll slim this one down just to the U.S. of A., where they were asking, I believe it was a congressional hearing. For those of you who were here, you saw it. If you weren't here, you can, I'm sure, find it. They were asking, with a central bank digital currency, in the event that there is a stock market crash, the economy collapses, GDP falls by 4%, and we need a cash infusion into the, 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 the economy, would we be able to siphon off Three, four, five hundred dollars from every account through the central bank digital currency to be able to reboost back up the economy. And the guy leaned forward into the microphone and said, Yes, we would be able to do this. And they seemed rather pleased because it was a way for them to figure out if there is an economic, when there is a future economic problem, that they'd be able to nullify it nearly instantaneously by siphoning off money and saying, You did your job as a citizen. Thank you for the money. The, the economy is no longer in trouble, even though you're being paid minimum wage. This entire discussion has really like let me understand that people aren't paying attention to what's happening. And once again, you cannot pay attention to everything. But this seems like something that's fairly commonplace. If you grew up with the internet or are using the internet, you should have a basic amount of knowledge about a lot of these things at this point. Say, remember, remember years ago when the entire discussion was uh, Facebook was taking everyone's private data and people were like, <gasps> what? Like shocked as, as if, you know, thing, nothing in life is free. There's a cost for everything. And then finding out that Facebook is still, is still, is still to this day reading your messages the algorithm goes through everything they even for those of you who don't know facebook also hires like actual people to look through images to see if there's something wrong with them or if they're illegal everything you do online everything you do with money un unless you are holding physical money is tracked this is not central bank digital currencies are, are not going to infringe on your rights any more than everything else that's currently happening to you right now. Everything you do online is monitored and saved everywhere you walk. And now that one sounds a little bit crazy. You can even find this if you if you have an Android or even if you have an iPhone, if you have Google Maps or something downloaded, if you have any maps, actually, you can find it. There's a, there's a setting. And, and, and I would say instead of digging through your phone trying to find this one thing, you can YouTube it. You can see exactly where you've walked over the course of a day, where you walked six months ago. All of it is saved in the phone. You've given away any, any, any privacy that you had is completely out the window because you have a smartphone, because you have an internet connection. That's the world that we currently live in. Central bank digital currencies aren't going to set us back any more than we are, like everything we do. You know how like sometimes when I'm like making a video and I like say like, oh, I can't read that. And, and I saw people in the comment section, you can read it, dude, you can say it. You know, there's an algorithm actively listening to me, right? Everything that every video that's posted on YouTube has an algorithm that listens to them. How do people not know how the world works? I'm so I'm so confused. Everything. And if you think it's some things, no, it's everything. So anyway, this discussion keeps popping up. I, I found it the, the, the words not comical, but maybe a bit worrying uh, how little people know about the current world that we live in right now and everything that goes on and the way that algorithms work and the way that AI is already everywhere and the fact that you're being tracked. This, 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 the, the point of this video was not to terrify you. It was more so that we can maybe get back on the right track when it comes to like figuring out the actual problems that are happening around us on the planet instead of being like this. This, this one thing is going to be the problem. That, that, when, we, when we have central... No, we... You're already, have you not seen the cameras everywhere in your cities?
You've seen, you've seen them. Come on, you've you've been on Instagram, you've been on Facebook, and you've seen people posting like crazy videos that have come from like a CCTV or like some other camera that's somewhere. You everything you do. Have you ever watched the um, last point? There was a video. This was years ago. I'm I'm sure there are thousands of them. This is the one that I saw. They were showing some guy. He ran a red light or something like that, and then jumped out of his car. This guy, I mean, he was a good 48 blocks away from where he, sh- he should have been later on. You know how they found him? Cameras and his phone. The camera showed exactly when he turned, when he turned right, when he turned left. And on his phone, they were able to access the data quite easily because we live in the future. And they knew exactly where he was. They even have this in video games. You, some of you must have played like these, like you know, twenty twenty seven or video games or something like that, like like where they show like, hey, we can track Jonathan and his motorbike because the phone signals right here. You can see you've seen Batman do it. Anyway, yeah, just wanted to let you all know that CBDCs are not like we are already in the dystopian future that my grandmother told me about when I was a kid. She was like, yeah, when I was, you know, when I was a kid, they were telling us what the future was going to be like. And I was like, what? That's crazy. Yeah, we're there. Like, we are there. Everything you say into your phone. Have you ever noticed? And, and, and I won't set off anyone's phone or uh, item in their house. You know, like when you talk to that little uh, device in your house that like, hey, play music. Hey, do this. You realize that it's, it, it has to constantly listen to you in order for you for it to hear that you said hey device play music it has to analyze every other word that you're saying constantly and even more so if you want to look into it uh it was revealed a couple of years ago that they and now they are constantly listening to you because a lot of the the voice data that they're getting has to be analyzed so that they can make their ai better so they're listening to your conversations. The thing doesn't uh, respond to you until you say, hey, device, play music or play this song. But the other stuff that's happening, it absorbs. It gets sent to a data center. People look through it to see if in the, how the, the, the algorithm is listening to it. Because you've seen before, like when you try, I don't have, I have none of these devices in my house and I never, ever, 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 ever will. My friends do. And when you talk to them sometimes, my friends have accents. They're from different places around the world. And sometimes it might not register what they're saying because of their accent. You know how that's fixed? A human has to listen to what is being said. Everything you do is already tracked. Central bank digital currencies are are not going to infringe on anything else. It hasn't already been infringed on since around 2012. Right. This is also one of the more popular news stories out there because for some reason people in Congress and the Senate within the United States continuously come forward either talking about the cryptocurrency space or central bank digital currencies and it's like no, you you are, you they already know everything that you're doing. Everything. That's why I was telling you before Didn't it seem a little weird when we keep hearing that PayPal has integrated and Visa has integrated and MasterCard has integrated into um, uh, Firefox and all these other things that are meant to be decentralized? It's another way for them to get your data. That's the central bank digital currency news. And yeah. Let's move on. Also in the news, in I expected this, in an expected mood move, uh, Coinbase apparently is going to be delisting around six assets on the 6th of September. The coins they're going to be delisting are Barn Bridge, Deriva Dow, Jupiter, something called Multichain, Uki, O-O-K-I and Voyager. Why did I expect this? Because there are so many garbage coins within the cryptocurrency space that people hype up for a week and a half. They buy these coins. The coins prices fall like to zero, zero. 
And then they have no trading volume on any of the cryptocurrency websites. Part of the problem is, is that every exchange seems to be adding every single coin at every single turn of a day. And they have so many coins on there. As the cryptocurrency market goes down and prices fall, even for the major coins, if we're talking about Bitcoin's uh, 24 hour volume is one sixth of what it was in 2021, one can only assume that other garbage coins are going to have the same exact problem, but these coins end up not being used. So uh, word of advice, I would, as always, state, uh, please make sure that you understand where you're putting your money. Not only is the cryptocurrency space extremely volatile, but about 99, that, that, that's fairly accurate. We have over like 10,000 coins. 99% of coins are absolute garbage, and I would love for you to avoid putting your money into the trash because you worked for it. That's the money that you made. You went to work to make that money, and people keep throwing it away into these coins that no one is ever, 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 ever going to use. There was never, there was never a 1% chance of you walking into a Starbucks in the year 2035, and they say, how are you paying and you say, I'm paying with Barn Bridge. Do you guys accept Uki? You guys don't accept Uki. Okay, well, I, I'll take my business elsewhere. That's the Coinbase is going to be delisting six different coins. Please keep track of where you have your money news. And yeah. Let's move on. Also in the news, because why not nowadays... Yesterday, ARK Invest and 21 shares submitted two new Ethereum futures ETFs to the US SEC. The first is named Active Ethereum Futures ETF ARKs, and it focuses solely on Ethereum derivatives. The second is known as the Active Bitcoin Ethereum Strategy ETF ARKI, literally called ARKI. And will cover both Bitcoin and Ethereum futures. Both of these products will invest in Ether futures. What? I would have never known that. That settle in cash via the CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. The filing states that the active Ethereum futures ETF plans to allocate over a quarter of their assets into Ether futures. Yes, two more have been submitted. There are now 18, one, eight submissions for an Ethereum futures ETF to the SEC, and who knows what's going to happen. If the SEC does not allow Ethereum futures, I would be shocked because they are cash settled. They can be manipulated. There's no big difference in like being able to manipulate a derivative in US dollars and a cryptocurrency in crypto. Both can be manipulated as every single market can. However, uh, we know that the SEC loves futures because it allows institutions to be able to short and or bet against the price of something and potentially bring down the cryptocurrency market because that's really all that the SEC wants. So yeah, in more news that we've been hearing over the last couple of weeks, a lot of people do believe that these futures for Ethereum are going to be in a breeze to get through, but they all want to be the first ones to actually have one. So I assume ish by the end of this year, we should have 22, 23, 24 Ethereum futures ETFs that have been approved. Maybe it'll do something to Ethereum's price. There is like a bit of a, like a, a hype when these things actually end up getting approved, but everyone seems to be of the idea that this is going to be fantastic or that they're going to be amazing or, who knows exactly what's going on? Yeah, I do sincerely hope. Why did my nose do that? My nose just touched the microphone. Okay, because I'm, I'm next to the microphone. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day. Great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever the heck you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.